All right. We had a few minor technical issues. This happens in the world of technology, but we're on now. Welcome to our live stream. And welcome to those of you who are going to be watching the replay, because you can access Dr. Clark whenever you want to, which should be the highlight of your day, of course, maybe even your week. I want to thank all of you uh, for being with us, and thank you for your support of what we're doing. We're seeing God bless in amazing ways, uh, for subscribing to the YouTube channel, the TikTok channel, the Enough is Enough podcast, the renamed Enough is Enough podcast. We were unveiling this and just starting to do some podcasts based on the new book, Escaping your narcissist, which covers the divorce process, there wouldn't be a Christian publisher in this world, I guarantee you, that would publish my latest book, Escaping Your Narcissist. They don't want to talk about divorce. They don't want to face it. But you know what? Yeah, Dr. Clark will go there and we don't need Christian publishers. So praise God. We're going to be helping people. and We already had a great response to that book. Of course, Facebook, Facebook, Instagram, all the support we're getting. We praise you for that. Thank you for it. Praise God for that. I made a recent call, as many of you may know, uh, for uh, Life After the Narc, Freedom Stories. And many of you are just coming through beautifully, story after story coming into my email directly. Uh, we're going to post a number of those stories on the website, davideclarkphd.com. This is going to encourage many, many, many people, women and men who are ready to get out from under a narc, out from under the abuse and the destruction of them and their children and grandchildren, frankly, if you're older, like I am. So thank you so much for that. And again, if you, and we'll make another call uh, for these emails at the end of the show, I think, but if you have a freedom story and you want to tell it, email, try to make it a paragraph two and three. I know that's hard to do because there's so many things that have happened, but we want to have, we're going to edit these to a degree, but just make it as brief as you can, but send it directly to me. Um, you may be in process of leaving. You may have be separated. You may already be divorced, but we're looking for those stories of encouragement. And, and of course, you're being very honest and we want that. It is not an easy process. Uh, it's not, uh, gosh, I'm free and this is wonderful. Oh, no. It's a difficult, nightmarish process, but it's always worth it. So send those emails to me, David E. Clark, Clark with an E, of course, David E. Clark, PhD, at gmail.com. That's my direct email. You can send it right to me. Now, while I deal with all kinds of marital crisis, that's what we do. My main lane now with, with God's clear guidance and, and the help of my team and prayer with the blonde, the main lane now is getting spouses out of abusive relationships with narcs. That's what we're doing. We're seeing God bless in amazing ways. And I'm not just going to tell you to leave. I will do that, of course, but I, we, got a, we got the entire program from start all the way through to the divorce and even beyond covered in these four books. That's why I wrote them. Very specific, biblically-based books to get you out, the heck out. Now, 20 Lies is what you start with if you're starting the process, shredding your codependency and getting strong enough and getting ready to get ready to leave. You got to start somewhere. This starts the process. All the lies that the church will tell you, that you tell yourself, that Satan certainly tells you, that the narc will tell you, we're going to get rid of those lies and get you strong. Then, of course, Enough is Enough, the Moody Publishers book. I did have a Christian publisher publish this, Miracle of the Ages. Very impressed with Moody. And this book will tell you exactly how to get out, step-by-step, step, the process of escape. And then, of course, I mentioned the Escaping Your Narcissist, this uh, current book, the latest, What to Expect When You Divorce a Narc, because you're going to divorce the narc. Narcs will rarely file on you. If they do, fine, great. But they probably won't. They don't want the narrative. You're going to have to, and you know what? God is fine with that, and this is going to get you through the divorce process, which is a nightmare. But again, I'll help you with that. And then finally, once you're done and you're out, you have to heal, and you have to get a reset. That's why I wrote, I didn't want a divorce. Now what? So we, my friends, have got you covered. And again, all biblically based, these books. I have been a graduate of two seminaries, and I'm not going to do anything that I don't believe is solidly biblical, have no interest in anything else. Now, also, you can do a phone advice session with me. That's all I do now is phone advice one time, maybe two, uh, to get the background, encourage you, confirm that you're with a narc. Many ladies and, and men wonder if this is what I'm dealing with. I'll tell you yes or no, and I'll have a plan of action for you and encourage you and move you down the process. So the phone advice is also, you can find that in the website. 
which is David E. Clark, PhD.com. Okay, let's check and see who's on before I got some information. I have a rant that I'm going to be giving, and you know Dr. Clark loves his rants. I'll be doing a rant on how why it's important to leave the NARC, but let's check in on a few people here as we're starting. And uh, just check in here. This lady says her health has improved immensely after Dr. Clark helped me get strong enough to separate from my covert abusive husband. Good for you. I was truly dying in the relationship. That's exactly right. You know what? Your health is going to improve like you won't believe when you're free of this person. Can you imagine? In fact, you, you don't have to imagine it if you're living it and if you've lived it. It is a constant level of stress living with a narc, whether it's covert or overt. It never stops. The fight or flight mechanism in full display, your body reacting, pinging, triggering, trauma after trauma after trauma from small, medium to large. It never stops. It's relentless. And even when he's nice to you for a few days or a week or two, and he's sorry for something that happened, he's not really sorry. He throws you a few crumbs from the table. Then you're, you're thinking, well, maybe, maybe he's got it or I get a little breather. You still have to be on edge because you know what's coming. And sure enough, over the smallest thing, he'll turn on a dime and turn on you like a snake. And the body, again, your emotions, your emotional life is being shredded. You have to respond. But the physical also responds. Your body isn't made to do that. That's not designed by God to react all the time to threats and to trauma. We're not made that way. And so your body's destroyed. Well, this lady's indicating you get out. Once you get out, your body's going to recover. God's going to take care of you. So it's a good point to make. This lady says, the whole time I was preparing, I, I doubted myself, very common, blame myself, where you're used to blaming yourself, codependents blame themselves, probably from childhood, and the narc convinces you because they're relentless with their attacks, relentless with their criticism over the smallest things. Sandy, the beautiful blonde, who's very bright, could pick, if she wanted to, she could pick me apart, all the quirks I've got, the dumb things I say. I'm the kind of person that has no filter. You may have noticed that. I just say stuff that doesn't need to be said. Well, okay, she could just take me apart. Well, that's what the dark does. Even things that are small mistakes or weaknesses, he will exploit those and make you feel terrible. So she doubted, she blamed herself. She's saying, questioned if I was the crazy one. Oh, and the narc wants you to believe you're the crazy one. It's part of their operation. Sure. Mind games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of desperation, I trusted God and made the leap. Good for you. And it feels like a leap off a cliff. But you know what? God's down there to catch you. You're not going to hit the rocks. It will be difficult, but God is going to be with you. Just like he was with Abigail in the Bible when she made those extraordinary moves with Nabal. Unprecedented in that culture. You didn't do that. God was with her. He took Nabal out. All right. Let's see what we've got here. we got to get see if people are coming in here. I'm not getting a stream, Phil, on them. I'm talking to Phil Dugas of Dugas Creative. I'm not getting the Facebook stream here. It seems to be kind of frozen. He'll come in here and help me. Phil, can you hear me? I think Phil's left the building. It's okay. Here's a good one. My adrenals are still switched on after, after several years. Yeah, it, it takes a while. That's part of why I wrote this book. I didn't want a divorce. You have to heal or your body will continue to respond, and we don't want that. Yeah, this Facebook thing seems to be a little stuck here. I don't know. It says new comments, but it's not like flowing like it usually does. We'll see if we can fix that. Oh, go up. Oh, someone's helped me. Go up in the comments. <laughs> yeah, I'm not the tech guy. I can't do anything. Here we go. I think we got, here we go. You just have to scro scroll? Yeah, you can scroll. Here too. Okay, yeah. Two oh, what do I know? Look, I'm 63 years old. I don't know what to tell you. Obviously, I'm still a vital man. And you can tell, but <laughs> text not my thing. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I left my narc wife. See, here's a narc wife. Wives are narcs too. After 26 years, long time, nine months post-divorce, freedom exclamation mark. Robert, I hear you. Good for you. The freedom is wonderful. The joy, the peace takes a while to get there. Now, good for you. Some of these ladies are absolutely just awful. Awful, awful, awful. Separated for two years, Mandy is. The divorce is taking forever. Yeah, I hear you. And it's draining all finances, right? And as emotionally, he's still trying to destroy me just in a different way. Exactly. Great point, Mandy. He destroys you during the marriage. No question about that. Every day, just about. 
And then when you have the nerve, the gall to leave him and divorce him, oh, he's going to make you suffer and try to destroy you. That's why, frankly, I wrote this latest book, Escaping Your Narcissist. It's still going to be a nightmare, but this is, it makes it more manageable. Have to have the right attorney, got to fight back, got to get this over with, and they'll drag it on forever just to make you suffer. And the stupid courts are a joke, as most of you know. There is no justice. You do the best you can because the courts don't care what it, they'll let him stall forever. Got to speed him up. Yeah. Okay. We'll keep scrolling here. Okay. Let me check out the, uh, the TikTok here. Yeah. 22 years of marriage. Kids with me. Yeah, good for you. Yeah, my mom is a narc. I hear you. Yeah. PTSD from childhood. No question. You got to do your healing. The I didn't want a divorce book will help you do the healing. All of us have to do it. I told a client today, and it's the God's truth, psychologically speaking. And scripture backs this up. If you don't heal from what's happened before, from childhood, let alone the horrible marriage with the narc, those issues never go away. Can't pray them away. Now, God's going to help you, but you have to do the work to heal, to clean your system out. Take you five, six, seven months. It's worth the effort. And the I didn't want a divorce book will help you do that. I work and he doesn't, and he tells me I'm lazy and don't do anything. <laughs> Classic. What an idiot. These narcs are idiots. They're so nasty. This guy's laying around in his fat butt, and he's telling his wife, who's the only one working, that she's lazy. You know what? You don't have to support a guy like that. Leave him. Get ready and leave. Oh, my goodness. Ridiculous. Yeah. Okay, let me, I'm going to go, I'm going to read a little bit about my rant here because we got to have to get the rant in and then I'll come back to your comments, your questions. And I particularly want to hear from those of you that have left, what's it like, what's going on, whether you're still in the divorce process or just separated or you are, you have been divorced. Okay, today's topic, life after the narc, small n, the narc doesn't get the capital N and stories of freedom. Okay, here's the rant about you leaving your narc. Leaving an abuser, leaving a narc who is destroying you and your children, listen to me, is always the right thing to do. Leaving is brutally tough, there's no question about it, and very costly in every way. But it's always the right choice. It will take time and effort and preparation. That's why I've written these four books. It is a process, and it's not easy. But they will tell you exactly how to do it and get you through. Now, I've seen the awful damage done to the abused spouse. We're mentioning it here as I, the emotional and physical toll is horrific. The physical damage, the emotional damage, the spiritual damage that the narc is doing to you and enjoying the process, it's entertainment for him. I've seen children disrespect their mother or father and turn against their own parent. And who makes that happen? Satan makes that happen through the narc. There is a demonic quality here. Many of you know what I'm talking about. Psychological is bad enough, but Satan jumps all over this and he's actually working through the narc. But what kind of a person would turn his children or her children against the other spouse? An evil, nasty, destructive, abusive narc. I'm not having that. That's why we are working hard every day to get people out of these relationships. I don't accept any excuse for staying with an abusive narc, and I've heard them all. In my book, 20 Lies, I cover, well, 20 of these miserable lies told by all kinds of people and that you end up believing as a codependent, and we shred them biblically and psychologically. That starts the process. Now, if you choose to stay with your abuser, and you certainly can do that if you want, free country, and God will let you do that. That's your choice, but I can't help you. That's not my lane. I will not help you stay and learn to live with the ongoing destruction of you and your children. That's not what I'm going to do. You need to find a counselor, and there's plenty of them, who will help you stay and help you manage. That is not some someplace I'm going to go. Uh-uh. My ministry is to help you get out. Unapologetically, get out. I don't care how old you are. I've dealt with women in their early 20s who, uh, who have a narc on their hands, and they married young, and they need to get out, not waste 20 years of their lives or 30 with the narc. I've dealt with ladies approaching 80 and even over 80 years of age, and, and, and they need to leave. Grandchildren, uh, health problems, I don't care. I'm telling you, you need to get out. If you've got one year to live, let that year be, and who knows, but let that year be peaceful and joy-filled. Get out. I don't care how old your kids are. 
I talked with a lady uh, last, uh, I think it was last week, who who is younger and has a has a child, 18 months, almost two years of age. She needs to get out. She's with a narc. Not an easy choice to make. It's the right choice. You raise that child with a narc for so many years, he'll turn that kid against you. And that's not what you need. It's damaging to the child as well. I don't care how long you've been married. A year, 18 months, uh, two months. I don't care. When you've got a narc, you've got a narc. Or 40, 50 years. I've dealt with ladies like that and men too. Don't care. Get out. If we define the narc as a monster, and, and when I talk on, with people in the phone advice sessions, I get a very solid history. I know what I'm doing. I should. I'm a clinical psychologist, licensed in the state of Florida. I know how to take a history. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm doing. If I get the evaluation and this is a monster, yeah, get out. I'm telling you right now, and this is contrary to what most of the Christian evangelical church teaches to this day, and it's a disgrace, frankly. It does not please God to stay with your narc. It grieves him. I am just telling you. How could it please God to have you being destroyed piece by piece, broken apart? That doesn't please him. It angers him and grieves him. It does not glorify God to stay. It breaks his heart. He knows more than anyone else exactly what you're going through, and he doesn't want that to happen. So I'm telling you right now, this is why I wrote these four books. This is the package deal. This is going to help you understand what's happening, define it, and get you out and help you then clean up the mess in your own life and heal and get a great reset. God is the God of restoration. And he's going to help you get out and live a different life. Now, let's see what's going on. And uh, I'll be responding to what your comments are, any questions you've got, or, of course, talk about your story and, and getting out. Okay, this going through a separation with a narc co-parent. Yeah, it's not easy. Not easy at all. Got some ideas in the books on that too. Yeah. This person barely survived the first joint custody court of, yeah, court session. Yeah, and, and petrified of going through it again. I know. You have to be strong and you got to stay strong. It is an awful process and you get no help from the court. That's for sure. Sometimes these judges, and of course we pray for a judge that gets it, understands the narc, and can smash him, it doesn't happen very often. Yeah. Yeah, it's about time I help myself. Good for you. You know, it's your turn. This isn't selfish. It's just healthy. It's been the narc's turn for how many months? How many years? You know what? Give it up. Now it's your turn to live the way God wants you to live. This Linda says, your videos and books have helped me so much. I'll praise God for that. That's why I wrote them. Thankful that you speak out about this topic. It's a shame that it is too prevalent. Boy, it absolutely is. And frankly, uh, so many counselors and, and pastors and just clueless people, they don't understand narcissism. They don't understand the damage. And they will have you stay in that relationship because staying married is the most important value for them. This is not what God says. In the Bible, we have clear reasons for biblical divorce. And one of those is chronic abuse. And your life and the life of your children and the quality of that life is more important than the marriage. And we have verse after verse, and you'll see that in the books, where how to handle serious sin. And abuse is certainly serious sin. What you do, you get away from that person. Now, the person has had umpteen chances to change. You shared your needs. He could care less. You brought up topics he doesn't want to talk about, and he shuts you down, gives you the silent treatment, and gaslights you on and on and on. He's not changing. He's not changing. People in my profession, very often passive, nice people, I don't have that problem, don't want to speak up. Don't, they want to do marriage work with the narc. Waste of time, money, and energy. Clueless. Don't bother with marriage counseling. You get your own personal counseling and you get out. <laughs> These devils are exhausting. Yes, they are. And devils is a good word. They're in league with Satan. I've seen it and you've seen it. Oh yeah, the evil things they do and say. The destruction of another person slowly and not so slowly in some cases is demonic. Absolutely it is. Satan loves it. He's involved. Oh yeah. This lady misses the family gatherings, but not the drama he caused during them. Oh, boy, I hear that. Just about every special event, vacation, holiday, family gathering, the narc will ruin. That's what they do. They have to have the drama, have to have the attention, and they know how important these events are to you. 
Well, they're going to mess it up. And the best part for the narc is it's going to be your fault in his crazy head. Yeah, you're now going to do everything separate. He will no longer be allowed to ruin your holidays, birthdays, everything, holiday, everything separate. Why? Because you're not with him and you're divorced. Yep. Here's a narc that abandoned his wife and children for drugs, alcohol, and women. Oh, yeah. Yep. That's exactly what they do. That's living the way the world wants to live. It, it will destroy him, but that's his choice. And justice will be done. And, and of course, you're better off. This lady wants to know the email. Yeah, just uh, my email is David E. Clark. That's Clark with an E, David E. Clark, PhD at gmail.com. And the website's the same thing. David E. Clark, PhD.com. So it's easy. Knoxville, Tennessee. Yes, Jerry, that's a beautiful area of the country. Absolutely it is. Yep. Let's see what's going on. TikTok. Yeah. All right. I need your book, says Patty. Patty, you can buy my books. I'm telling you what. The Enough is Enough book you can get anywhere, frankly. Uh, on my website, of course. Uh, but also Amazon, uh, moodypublishers.com. The other books I'm talking about are all on the website because they're self-published. I'm not even going to Christian publishers anymore. Moody was gracious enough to publish Enough is Enough. I can tell you right now, uh, they and other publishers aren't going to publish what I'm publishing now because it's hardcore and it's tough and, and it's a little too much for them. Well, whatever. Uh, you can get them on the website. Yeah, why doesn't God heal the marriage and the narc? I know. You have prayed a million times, haven't you, for, for God to change the narc and to heal the marriage. You know what? That's God's business. But I tell you what, it's not God's fault. That, that's the narc. The full responsibility lies on the narc, and they rarely change. Switch your prayers. I wouldn't pray one more stinking time. I would not for the narc or him to change. Or frankly, for God to save your marriage. Stop doing that. That's codependent praying. I, no. No, for years, okay, you've done that. It hasn't helped. Now the prayers need to be, help me get out of this. Empower me. Protect my relationship with my children. Give me the right attorney. Help me to get a job. Help me to get away from this monster. That's the prayer, and God's going to answer that prayer. I'm reading in the Psalms now every morning uh, for my quiet time. And, and, I'm, and the things that King David says are just like awesome. He prays against his enemies. God, take my enemies out. God, hurt my enemies. God, give my enemies shame and disgrace. Protect me over and over. These, This is what you need to pray because your dark is your enemy. I care if you're married to him or not, or her, could be a her. Boom. You can pray those prayers and you should pray those prayers. Yeah, marriage became my God. You know what? That's easy to happen because it means so much to you. Most of the people I talk to, men and women both, married to a narc, they don't want a divorce. They want the person to change. They want to protect their kids. They want to have the family. This is a desire in most of us. That is not going to happen with a narc. Virtually doesn't ever happen. So you have to make an adjustment and God will get you out and he'll bless you. I've told more than one, more than one person I get part of the background is, do you have children with the narc? And we name the kids and their ages. And I say, well, those kids are precious. And near the end of the session, once I find out how horrible the situation is and what the narc's been doing in terms of damage, I'll say, you know what? If they have three kids or two kids, I'll say, those three kids, those two kids are the only good things about this marriage. They are precious. God wanted you to get married, if nothing else, to have those kids. But that's enough. All right, now we got to get out. I'm 21 and he's 23. These are these are young people. I think he's a narc. Yeah, boy. She wants to know if she should tell him. No, 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 no. Don't even mention it. Waste of time. Read. I would especially read the Enough is Enough book It in six full chapters at the beginning of the book. Intro in the first five chapters carefully defines a narc. I don't throw this term around. I want it to be specifically defined and described in detail. You read that book, this young woman, and you'll know if he's a narc or not. You don't Tell a narc he's a narc. It's a waste of time. Like he cares. He'll deny it anyway. Or even worse, I've had narcs accept it. Yeah, I'm a narc. Who cares? They don't care. It's a secret plan of escape and you get out. At 21 years old, for heaven's sake, you, you've got your whole life ahead of you. Yeah, stuck without money, physically abused, mentally, sexually. Yep, going to take a while. If you're dependent 
on the narc and maybe you're raising kids or you don't have a job, you don't know where the money is, narcs love control, it's going to take some time, all right, to develop training, uh, go to college, uh, get a job, get your own account, going to take some time to prepare to leave. Take the time, start somewhere. Going to take maybe months, that's okay. All right. Here's the person divorcing a narc right now. 13 years, two kids. Yeah. Ah, he's dating the girl he denied he was seeing. <laughs> yeah, classic. These narcs will find these skanks. They're everywhere. And these worthless women, they don't care. They, they know you're married. They don't care. They know you have kids. They don't care. Let the narc have her. You're done with him. It's going to hurt. You got to heal from it, of course. Let's take out the Facebook here. Yeah, during the divorce process, he lied and lied and got away with it. Exactly. Yep. Oh, the judge had enough and put him in contempt of court. Yes, it's about time. Some judges will do that. Yep. Turned in paperwork incomplete. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They'll stall. They'll, they'll all kinds of frivolous motions lie their heads off. That's why you need an attorney that understands the narc and how to counteract that. You don't want to be on the defensive all the time. I may have missed my calling. I would have been a top flight attorney, mean as a snake, because it's required. You need to be proactive and file your own charges and, and, and make your own charges just to, to fight fire with fire. You need an attorney that will do that. Oh boy, pregnant, working two jobs. But when I lost one job, he went around saying that I'm lazy, a classic. Here's another person being accused of being lazy. Yeah. And if you're raising kids, you're the last, lazy is the last thing you are. Out five years this past weekend. Sandra, what a beautiful name. That is my wife's name. Yes. Yeah, boy, good for you. Broke up two weeks now, and he went from me, oh, to, to his supply in Florida. Oh, yeah. They don't let any moss grow under their feet. Oh, I'm telling you. They will find their next supply, and they'll find it fast. It'll be family. They're stupid, narc family. It'll be friends that they can lie to. It'll be a pastor who's clueless who will, will turn against you, and it will be another woman. If it's a guy or a woman, they'll find somebody else who will supply them. They will not go without supply. Oh, no, they won't. Yeah, boy. This lady says, definitely demonic. Yeah, boy. It is. It is. Yep. I saw the demon on Discovery Day. Yeah, boy. Oh, yeah. You you get the vibe. You see that the eyes go dark. They go black. Oh, that's frightening. Yep. Here's a lady who's 60 years old, a young woman. I am telling you, you're not even in the prime. Speaking as a 63-year-old, and she's in the process of a divorce. Married 35 years. Yeah, long enough. Tried to separate before. No success. Yeah, I know. It's hard. Planned, he planned to escape for months. One day I made up a story to visit my mom. Good. But actually went to the airport and left him my house and my country. Whoa. Okay, Christina, good for you. You do whatever you have to do. Not unusual to have a few starts where you, you can't get it done because you're not strong enough or you're not ready. Don't quit. Stay at it. The narc wants to break you so down so badly that you're unable to leave. You got to get your strength. Oh, this is a sweetheart. Miriam. That's a pretty name. You don't hear many Miriams anymore, and that's a shame. Uh, your ministry saved my mind, and I always refer others to you. Good for you. You know what? Thank you. We're doing our best here. Yes, yes, we are. Yeah. Huh. They say when the devil can't turn you, he sends a narc. <laughs> Anna, boy, isn't that the truth? Oh, yeah. They're, they're willing participants. Now, the narc doesn't know it. They wouldn't realize they're in league with Satan. That's when Satan does his best work. But they're being used by him. Absolutely. Yep. So when you get rid of the narc and leave the narc, you're leaving Satan at the same time. And that's important. Because the devil wants to destroy you and wants to destroy your kids. Absolutely. And we want to get you away from that. Yeah. Yeah, this is absolutely right, Candy says. Couldn't agree more. Healing after narcissistic abuse is one of the hardest things to do. Absolutely. This is no cakewalk. Leaving is incredibly hard. That's why I wrote, I didn't want a divorce. Now what? This is the package here. This is step-by-step -step healing. Not just from the narc and the abuse, but everything else in your life that has caused you significant pain and trauma. Childhood, we're going to clean all of it out so that you are healed and you are restored, and that's what God wants. But no, it's not easy. No, 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 no. Very difficult. Yeah. Thank you for being brutally honest. Yeah, that's my style. No frills, no softness, no elegance, no sweetness. That's not my style. That's the blonde. 
I can be a lot of fun, but not when I'm doing my job. No, not typically. Yeah. Yeah. Satan wants to destroy you, Linda says, and don't stay with an ark. Absolutely. In fact, it will help you to know, like I'm saying this evening, to know that Satan, he's, Satan is, is in him. Satan is working through him. So many of these narcs say they're Christians and they look great on Sunday morning and Wednesday morning and they're helping the community. They are not Christians. If they are, they're horribly backslidden, but I doubt it. No fruit. Are you kidding? You know what you're living with. Satan can easily infiltrate them and control them and use them. So that's, that's the picture. You're not leaving your husband or your wife. You're leaving Satan. Yes, you are. Here's a, here's, a, here's a man. I wish I got out many years ago. I know. There, there's some regrets there. It's okay. I left unplanned, filed, and divorced her after 26 years. Yeah. Went no contact as per your book. Good for you. You know what? You're still ahead of the game. I don't care if it's 40 years or 50 years. Get out. You're still ahead. Nothing worse than staying until you die. Or your health is just absolutely shattered. Yeah, stay strong, this lady says. Almost 36 years, Carol says. Final court date next week. All right. You're going to make it, baby. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. This person says you're the absolute best. Well, it's about time somebody realized that. Maybe that was Sandy saying that. I don't know. Yeah, I prefer my peace. Oh, yeah, peace. Peace is one of the greatest results of leaving a narc. I mean, and it's a beautiful thing. You haven't had peace ever since he turned on you soon after the wedding, which is what most of them do. And to get that peace back is like, oh, it, it, you can't describe how wonderful it is. Yep. Oh, this guy, he's out, but he says he doesn't care about the divorce and, and we'll be back together. Oh, no, you won't be. Don't, I'm, listen to me. Don't go back to the narc. I've got a couple of chapters in this latest book that make it very clear, biblically, as well as psychologically, don't go back. Many have made the mistake of going back, believing the love bombing and the fake repentance, and they're shredded. Let me tell you right now, the narc, he'll act repentant, I'll make it up to you, but if you're crazy enough to go back to him, and many of you have, have had this experience and had to leave again, and if you do that, okay, just leave again and, and don't go back. He will turn on you and he will never forgive you ever for the rest of your natural life or his for leaving him in the first place. He will make you suffer like you can't believe. It will be worse than you've had before. Do not waver. Do not go back. And if you have, okay, God love you. It's okay. Reconstitute, build your new support team and get out again. Yeah. Yeah. I had him back, says this lady, worst mistake of my life. Listen to this lady. Absolutely true. Not the end of the world. They're masters of deception. And they hit you in your soft spot, your vulnerability, because they know you don't want to be divorced. They, they'll offer you the, the package that they know you want. I'll follow God. I will pray with you. I will spend time with the kids. I will meet your needs. I will romance you. And they can bring it and you believe it. It's a big, fat series of lies. If you've made the mistake, okay, and many do, and women that are brilliant, that, that love the Lord. Mm, it's okay. Not the end of the world. You can, you can figure it out and go, oh no, I, I made a mistake. Secretly gear up, follow Dr. Clark's plan and get out again and stay out. It's okay. Oh, Trish has a wonderful Christian therapist. Good. And you need a wonderful Christian therapist. I'm so grateful for her and for you, David. My therapist is amazing and understands narcissistic behavior. Thank God. Yes, I couldn't agree more. And there were some great therapists. In fact, we have a plan to develop not only these stories of escape and freedom and have those on the website or, 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 or on a blog, something like this. We're working on that now, Phil Dugas and I of Dugas Creative. And um, and by the way, I'm just telling you, if you, need a, if you have a ministry or a business and you need a website, particularly if you're a Christian, speaking of Christian therapists, if you're a Christian therapist, Contact, email, or, or, or find his website, Dugas Creative, D-U-G-A-S. He'll do your website. He'll help you with social media. He'll get you going and get the word out so you can help others. Yeah. But at, uh, like I was saying, at 63, you kind of forget things. We're going to build a, a, a nationwide referral network for solid, as many as we can find, attorneys, Christian or not, 
who understand narcs and, and so we can have a referral source. We're not going to charge for anything for this. And we're going to find also a network of Christian therapists like this lady's talking about who understand narcissism. Many Christian therapists don't. Good people, clueless, don't understand, not helpful. We're going to find people that get it. A lot of these referral lists, you can join by giving money. And if you're licensed, that doesn't mean you're any good as a therapist and you understand narcissism. We're going to find the people the best way we can. And so we'll have a referral network, depending on where you live, that we can help you with. So we're working on that. we got a lot of things in the works here. And I think it's going to be helpful to everybody. Yeah, my husband ghosted me when I was in the hospital. Oh, classic. You know what? This, this is narcissism on display. They won't come to the hospital or they'll, they, they feel put upon because you're in the hospital and you're fighting for your life or you have long COVID or you've got whatever you've got. You're, you don't understand. You're disrupting their lives. They're inconvenienced. Uh, you know, you, you can't have sex with them. He, he's going to have to help with the kids. And so they actually resent you as if it's your fault for being in the hospital or being ill. Are you kidding me? Narc, absolute evil narc. When you get out of the hospital, ma'am, get away from him. I don't want that narc standing by my hospital bed close to where the plug is. He'll pull it. Uh Uh-uh. That's incredible selfishness. A normal husband would be concerned, would be praying, wouldn't ghost you. He'd be there every minute he could and supporting you and helping you and helping you recover. Narcs don't do that. They just resent you. Can't your mother help you? You know, when, when are you coming home? It's ridiculous. See what we got here. Yes, God does not expect you to stay. Absolutely, He does not. I come across people who, and pastors, even Christian counselors who who have a problem with what I'm saying. They don't they they, they don't like the divorce talk. They don't like the fact that I'm 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 getting people out of these abusive marriages. I say, okay, fine. I don't care. I'm unapologetic. I think you're in the wrong. But if you want to have a ministry, pastor, you want to have a ministry, Christian therapist. You want to have a ministry, church leader, uh, in, in helping women stay in abusive relationships and helping them destroy, have their lives destroyed and their children destroyed? Go ahead and do it. I'm not doing that. I'm doing just the opposite and with no apology. And God is blessing us. These people are just clueless. And, and frankly, I'm not worried about calling them out. I don't waste talking time talking to them unless they, they accost me in public, but I'm not going to fool with it. But it's ridiculous. You do what you want to do. I'm not doing that. Not one anxiety episode since he left. It's what I'm talking about. Exactly. All your anxiety, all your depression, all your autoimmune disorders, all the, the kidney problems, the blinding headaches, you know, the, the panic attacks, it's all tied to the narc. He's the source of the problem. If we remove that, the malignant tumor that is the narc, you're going to feel better. And that's exactly what God wants. Good for you. No more anxiety is right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the PTSD is real. They ruin everything. Absolutely. You live with an arc long enough, you're going to have PTSD. It doesn't take long. And that's part of your healing process, of course, is to heal from that. And you will be able to do that with the right therapist. Yes. Yes, Carol says there's hope. Absolutely there's hope. Yeah, boy. Okay. My husband blocks my number so I can't get a hold of him. He's a truck driver. <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> you know, he doesn't want to be disturbed. That's because he's doing things that are wrong and doesn't want to have his wife talk to him. Narc. Don't even stop trying to uh, uh, talk to him. And and fight fire with fire. If he ever wants to contact you when he's on the road, you're not available. You block him at the same time. I wouldn't blame you. Yep. Here's another husband that blocks him, blocks this lady all the time. What kind of person does that? It's ridiculous. A narc. Yeah, lady throwing up, diarrhea. It, it, nerves wouldn't let her sleep. The gastrointestinal problems you'll have, it just eviscerates your gut. Get away from him. There isn't an enema big enough to help you. Yeah, boy. Yeah, the, your kid's behavior is, is your fault. Well, of course it is. The narc blames you for literally everything. Everything. Problems in the Middle East, your fault. Shark attack in Florida, your fault. 
Uh, if, if one of your kids has a problem, acts out in school, which is normal, guess whose fault? Your fault. Everything is your fault. Always. Well, you can't work with a person like that, and it, and it ruins you. Oh, yeah, here's the church. Exactly, Jenny. I went to my church, and they said, treat him nicer, and he will change. This has never worked in the history of the world, all the way back to Adam and Eve, and yet people are still dumb enough to recommend it. You want to know why? Well, because they're dumb, but also they don't care about you. They don't. What they care about is the marriage. And they actually believe that the woman is the key to the whole thing. And if you will love this man who's treating you terribly, and you've told them he is, they don't care. Your job is to keep loving him and loving him, and he'll change. Wow, never happened. How many more years am I supposed to do this? Get away from those people too, because I'm telling you, they're abusers too. They seem nice, they're Christians, they're leading a ministry, they're your pastor, they're in counseling, who cares? They're abusing you too. Get the heck away from them, too, and find people that get it. Linda says, Enough is Enough is a great book. Well, of course it is. I think it is. The best I could do. Yeah, man, I think it's helpful. Not perfect, but helpful. Yeah. A good therapist has helped. Carol as well. Good, good, good. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy to go through a couple of therapists who don't get it and actually do more harm than good. Okay, it's like with attorneys, very common to, to go through a few attorneys and they're they're not any good, and they're weak, and they won't help you. You need to get a tiger. You need to get a therapist like me who's tough, who gets it. They're not going to fool with your narc. They're not going to talk to your narc. They're going to work with you. Because what the narc will often do is they if, they if they know you're seeing a therapist, they hate to lose control. They want to have a session with your therapist. They want to give their input and try to win the therapist over. And they want to know what's happening. You don't tell the narc anything about your therapy. The only thing you say is, you know what, honey? I'm working on me. This has nothing to do with you. Okay, you're lying. Who cares? It's a Rahab lie. Put them off. And you need a therapist who will say, like I used to work, and I do these phone sessions. I will never talk to the narc knowingly. No. And I don't talk to narcs, period. If I know it's a narc, I'm hanging up. I don't have any patience for that. Unless, unless... It's what I call a semi-narc who has destroyed his marriage and truly wants to change, and there aren't many of those. I will not do that. So you want a therapist who will who will ignore his calls, ignore his emails. You're not, he's not dealing with them. And then the narc will say, "Well, how can how can your therapist, uh, you know, call me a narc? Of course, you haven't told me you're a narc, or or have a problem with me when he hasn't even talked to me. Easy, because the therapist believes you and they understand it. This is a secret process. That's the kind of therapist you need." Here's a lady who still has dreams that I'm looking for him and I could never find him. Yeah, boy. Will these dreams about him ever stop? Yes, they will. I'm telling you right now, Christine. Yes, it's going to take some time. You're in the divorce process. This is the yearning of the heart, the yearning of the soul, the mind to, 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 to have it work. But it's classic in your dreams. You never find him. Of course, you know, if he can't be found and you don't want to find him, no, they'll go away. You'll heal. God's into restoration. Take some time. But yeah. Oh, pray that my husband gets a heart conviction. No, I'm going to pray. I shouldn't say, I pray that he has a heart attack. I'm not saying that. That came to mind. No. Now, now if he's a reasonable guy and uh, and he's not a narc, yeah, I might pray for him. If he's a dyed-in-the-wool narc, I'm telling you, this sweet lady, don't pray that prayer. You pray for yourself. Pray for the strength to get away from him. All I would pray for the narc is, and I do this when I pray with my clients at the end of calls, which I almost always do, I just simply say, Dear Father, I'm leaving the narc, I'm leaving this man or woman in your hands to do with them as you will. That's it. I'm not going to pray for any change. Nope, nope. God knows. Yeah. I, try, I tried marriage counseling. Oh my gosh, what a joke. He had them in the palm of his hand. Exactly. Oh my goodness. These narcs are smart. They're sneaky smart. And they understand, and most counselors are passive and they're sweet. That's not like me. Don't get one like that. Of course, don't even bother with marriage counseling. This sweet lady has found that out. Uh, but they they will, the narc will twist them around their finger. First session, second session at the least. And, and he will have them in the palm of his hand. And it's your fault. They're masters of this. Don't bother with marriage counseling. Waste of time. 39 years married. Finally got him out of the house after a protective order. Beautiful. If you can get a protective order, get it and never rescind it. If there are charges, don't ever let up. Get him out. 
five years since he's physically abused me. Well, that's something. It shouldn't have happened in the first place. Yeah. Threatened me, pounding his fist, flailing his arms at me as he chased me through the house. Oh, for heaven's sake, that's physical abuse. I don't care if he doesn't touch you. That kind of threats or destroying things, yelling your head off, that's violence. Oh, my goodness. Ugh. Oh, he's going to fight the protective order. Of course he is. You fight right back. Yeah, you do the best you can. You never live with him again and try to keep that protective order. Absolutely. Yeah, man. You hear story after story, and I do every week in this office, and you hear it in the media too, even with well-known people who get beaten up, physically assaulted, and they and 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 the boyfriend, the you know, the the um the husband and the woman recants and bails him. I wouldn't bail a narc out of prison. You let him do it fine. Have his calm as crazy mother or some stupid friend. You don't do that. You leave and you never come back. If one time a man puts his hand on you, or frankly a woman too, strikes you, you call the cops and you get the protective order right at that same day. Otherwise it's going to keep happening and you get the heck away. That's not normal behavior ever. No excuse for it. And of course the narc will blame you. Everything's your fault. He'll blame you if, if he strikes you or shoves you or grabs your throat. Because if you hadn't said this, if you hadn't done this, I wouldn't have had to. Really? I've had that happen to my office here back when I was seeing people. I won't see them anymore. It's just the phone. But I would say, that's ridiculous. You're an idiot. You are totally at fault for anything you do to your wife, physically, let alone emotionally. Oh, they hated it. And they hated me. And they would walk out of my office. Fine. And I kick some of them out. Fine. I don't need them. Can't do a thing with them. Here's a good question from Haley. Why are there so many of these dirt bags? Oh, I'm telling you, so many narcs. Haley, a lot, of, a lot of reasons for that. If these aren't the end days, I don't know what is. We are seeing Satan on the march. He's always been in control of this world with God's permission, and it's just accelerating. All these crazy sexual things and all the wokeism and all the, all the narc. We are breeding narcs. The breakdown. We've taken God out of the schools. Brilliant choice. Taken God out of out of government. Taken God out of just about everything. This this crazy country and our ridiculous leaders shut down churches because of COVID. I, this is political. I don't care. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Let people decide if they're going to congregate or not. Control. So a lot of these things are happening, and I believe it's uh, satanically inspired. I absolutely do. Churning these people out. It's an epidemic. There are Christian ministries that you would know if I told you, well-known, that are clueless, that believe that narcissism is not a major problem. It's a niche market. They're, they're, they're crazy. They're foolish. It is a massive problem. Our ministry is proving that. With, with the book sales we're having, praise God, and the people we're helping, and the response to the videos, we're, we're getting the influence God is giving us for His kingdom, and getting these people out is enormous. And that's why? Because there are narcs out there, many, and we're churning out more all the time. It's a good question, and it's not going to get any better. Oh, this is the good one. He slept with his attorney during his first divorce. Oh, gosh. This is classic. Yeah, beautiful. Talk about unprofessional. Oh, he now wants to use the same attorney again you know, with ours. <laughs> you know he does. Oh, my goodness sleazy attorney, and, and the narc almost always hires the sleaziest, nastiest attorney he can possibly find. That's why you have to counter, not with a sleaze, but with a tough, gutter-fighting, knuckle-and-skull-fighting attorney, tough as nails. Not a narc, maybe close, but someone who will fight for you in the trenches and wants to win and knows how to handle a narc. And won't want to sleep with you. I mean, it's just it's just ridiculous. For heaven's sake, they're just monsters. She probably gave it to him for free. Who knows? I mean, the services. I don't live. Yeah, yeah. This is true. They need deliverance. They absolutely do. But you know what? Who cares? That that's not my problem, and it's not your problem. I'm not even going to pray about that. You just get away. Whatever God does with them after you leave is up to God. I wouldn't uh, be too worried about that. They're not your problem anymore. Now, ongoing, and I handle this also to a degree in the I didn't want a divorce book. Yeah, you're going to have to keep dealing with them, but there are strategies you can use to manage them and help your kids not be infected by them after you divorce them. Not easy because they're relentless. 
Can they change? Jennifer, a great question. The answer is a big, fat, definitive no. If we have a bona fide narc, as I define it in enough is enough, I mean bona fide, no. Practically never. Period. There are Christian ministries that hate to hear, well, God can't do, why can't God, don't you believe? No, because I have 40 years of experience with these people. I've seen four or five actually change, and those were not died in the wool narcs. I call them semi-narcs, super selfish, a lot of issues, but they actually had the wherewithal to change. Very rare. Don't count on it. People, certain people hate when I say that. Just the truth. And, and your own stories are proving that to be true. Over, and I've heard thousands and thousands of stories of living with the narc on the phone and my phone advice sessions in, in, uh, you know, e e emails and texts that I receive, and of course the Facebook and the Instagram, all the stories we're hearing, five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50 years of living with the narc, trying, praying, doing everything, seminars, counseling, books, programs, going to the Amen Clinic and having the narc's brain map. Don't waste your time. It doesn't work. They don't change, period. Here's this lady, dear lady, is 71 years old, 70 years young, I should say. And after six years, she just, yeah, after six, I just filed for divorce. Good for you. I belong to the Lord Jesus. Yes, you do. And I am done. No contact. Beautiful. I am with you. This whole community is with you, this dear lady. Yes, done. Good for you. 71 years young. You could have 20 more years of peace and joy. Good for you. Get out. Yeah. Bonnie says, I want to get all your books. Yes, Bonnie, you should. You know what? It's up to you. I find these very helpful. And frankly, you won't find books like these in many places because people aren't as direct as I am. I'm going to tell you just what to do. That's my job. I have never once said in my counseling career, how does that make you feel? If, you, if a counselor says that to you, just get up and walk out. Pay for the time. Get out. I'm going to tell you what to do. That's my job. I should know. And I'll help you do it. That's why these are, these are books. It's not just get out, let me know what happens. I'm going to teach you how to do it, step by step. Yeah, why doesn't God heal the narc? I know. I think I already answered that. You know what? That's his choice. There's such a thing as the hardened heart in the Bible, and there's nothing worse than that. And when you have the hardened heart, all hope is gone. But you know whose fault that is? Not God's. That's the narc's fault. And many narcs have a hardened heart. They, they, they think they're fine with God. They think they're going to heaven. They think they know Jesus. They do not. Most of them, they do not. Now, God knows, but it doesn't look good. And when the, once they have the hardened heart, no, no. And, and this is the kind of person, you're being destroyed in front of him. And he could care less, and it's your fault, and he enjoys it. Okay. God's going to leave that person to his own devices. The scripture's clear on this. We see it in Romans 1. I, giving men over, giving people over to their desires, over to their choices. Okay, that's on them. This is good. This lady makes a good point. We have to remind ourselves, this is the truth, that any fallout from leaving to us, the kids, finances, and all those things will happen. It's brutally tough. It's all because of his actions, the narc's actions. Yes, not anything we did to protect ourselves. Exactly. Right. You'll be blamed for all of that by many people. It's ridiculous. If only, and I handled this in Escaping Your Narcissist book, these clueless wonders, these pastors, these friends, these, these family members who are too stupid to believe, who, who will blame you. Well, if you hadn't left, if you hadn't filed divorce, none of this would be happening. Are you out of your mind? This has been happening for months and years. Yes, I had a right to get out. It is not your fault, and you will not accept that. And frankly, cut those people off. They can talk to the hand. They can talk to the wall. You're done with them. Oh, yeah, this is an ex that told me I was going to have to become a Muslim. Oh, wonderful. You know what? No, I don't think so. Nope, not going there. I'll just say this. I think most of you know this, and if you don't know it, you may be offended. Christianity, as expressed in the Bible, which is God's spoken word and completely accurate in its entirety, 
is the only true religion. There is only one God. That's the God of the Bible. There's only one way to reach that God, and that is through his son, Jesus Christ. Believing that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose again, this is the gospel. There is no other way. Now, you can believe whatever you want, but that's the truth. What the Bible teaches. Which book helps, here's the good one, here's which book helps heal the trauma bond. Right here. I mean, they're all, in a way, they all do, but I didn't want a divorce. That's why I wrote it. It's a comprehensive after the divorce because I don't want you healing from the trauma bond completely because of the deeper level work you need until you're out and you've gotten the divorce over with because you need all your resources. But this is the book for you. Now, also, and this is mentioned in this book, I didn't want a divorce. Now what? A book I wrote years ago called I'm Not Okay and Neither Are You is also a great companion volume for your healing, step-by-step -step emotional healing. That's a deeper level of healing along with this book. I get to sell two books, up to you. I'd start with this, and then you can shift also and add in, I should say, to I'm Not Okay and Neither Are You would be very helpful. It's a good question. We have a book for everything here. Yeah. Here's good. A wolf cannot transform into a sheep. Right. And you got a wolf. You got a wolf. They're always a wolf. Right. See, this isn't the normal situation. Uh, normal people can make changes, and it's still hard. Addictions, uh, depression, uh, anxiety, all kinds of issues, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. I work with all these in my career, being a clinical psychologist. That's hard work, but it can be done. Narcs don't change. They don't think they have to change. Everybody else has to change. And so it's, it's, it's frankly, a waste of time. Won't do it. 42 years, I told him things need to change. Yeah, like he cared. She's been out for three years, and I'm closer to God than ever. See, the spiritual benefits are also awesome. Absolutely awesome. You know what? It's 831. Man, these live streams go fast. Thank you so much for your, for your involvement. We got the TikTok people, too. Uh, it's hard to go kind of back and forth here, but thank you so much. Keep in mind, I want to hear your freedom stories. So email them to me, two or three paragraphs. If you can do that, I know it's hard, condense. Um, and even mention the tough times. David E. Clark, Clark with me, David E. Clark, PhD at gmail.com. We'd love to hear that until the next live stream, which will be three or four weeks. Stay tuned. If you subscribe on my website, David E. Clark, PhD.com, you will get all the reminders of upcoming events like these live streams. So thank you for being involved. Praise God for all those of you that are getting out. And I pray for those of you who aren't out yet that you will get out.